In this video, traders, we're going to look at clues to spot a trend day before it happens. You know how powerful it is and profitable it can be to get on the end of a trend day. Stay tuned. Hey traders, this one for the day traders of you out there, or actually even the swing traders looking to get on board that early part of the trend. Okay, so clues to spot a trend day before it happens. Now, it's all very well we stand up here and say, oh yeah, if you get the end of this trend, you're gonna to to go from here to here. That's very, very nice, obviously, but we need to kind of know as early as possible if it's potentially gonna be a trend day so we can get on board it and treat it like a trend day, trade it accordingly, and get the trades on early, leave them alone and hope and expect, should I say, that the trade is gonna run right the way to the end of the day and then make the decision in the last kind of half an hour, whether you're gonna trim some, we're gonna add some, we're gonna close it, we're gonna hold it overnight, however you're gonna play it. So how do we do that? Right, there's a couple of things to look at. The first one we need to look at is the prior day's action. So what's happened yesterday? What's happened the day before yesterday? Have we had a narrow range? Have we broken out of a key level? Have we kind of been messing around here? You know, we've broken out of a key level. We've done a bit of a narrow range and then it looks like we might kind of burst up into the stratosphere. Has that been the case? You know, what's the situation? Have we kind of faked out to the highs? Have we had a catalyst? You know, there's loads of variables that we're gonna look at which may well dictate that potentially today could be a trend day. Now, if we've had two big monster trend days yesterday, today possibly won't be a trend day. Obviously, it depends on the market environment, but generally speaking, three huge trend days in a row is an unusual occurrence. So we take that into account and say, okay, you know, we've got two massive trend days, the weekly ATR is X, we're already the weekly ATR, we're putting in a backfill a bit, or that's the most likely scenario. So taking the prior day's action into account and looking at it and, and kind of having a hypothesis and a thesis of, hey, what's gonna happen today? Is it a possibility that we could expand wildly? You know, what? You know, just putting together some kind of framework on it. If we're in the middle of holidays, middle of you know, Christmas period or holiday period or summer or this or that, or it's a day before kind of key data or we're away waiting for some data next week that's really important. Again, this kind of stuff is gonna give you an idea that it's probably not gonna be a trend day. All right, another thing we're gonna look at is the overnight range. So there's a few things to look at here. One is the the, the kind of uh, the actual range itself, so high minus low, the, the numerical value of the range. So example would be if we've been trading uh, the Dow, you know, we're gonna have the overnight session or the S&P 500, the overnight session, all that time that's been trading overnight until that open, what's the range of that? How does it compare to previous ranges? If we've got a big range, then potentially today, uh, when we open, we could have a big range as well because a lot of people have been putting a lot of money to work. What's the volume been like? Where are we opening in relation to the high and low of the overnight range? Are we opening in extremes? Have we sort of put in extremes and we're fading them? Just putting together again the framework of where we are relative to obviously yesterday's close, that goes without saying, but where we are relative to the overnight highs, lows, middle, mean points, uh, VWAPs if you're using that kind of stuff. Just then that reference to say, okay, you know, we've got a decent overnight range. We're, we're opening near the high of it. It looks like it's bullish. We're gapping out of a range on the prior day's action. Okay, there's some pre-market action that's given us a bit of a nod. There's prior day's action that's given us a bit of a nod. The position of price has given us a bit of a nod. All right, if I can get on the end of something early on, if I can get on the end of a little pullback or a little pause and I can buy it and I get a good run, am I gonna put my stop in at the low, I'm gonna leave it. Because generally speaking, guys, the trend day will the open will be pretty close to the low of the day and the close if we're going an uptrend by the way we'll be pretty close to the lower day and the close will be pretty close to the higher day give or take 10 percent so in reality if you if you get on early on a trend day and make a good guess so to speak that it will be a trend day you get on it you, the odds are on your side to hold it for the end of the day you don't know how far it's going to run all right other clues we've got the first 15 30 or 60 minute range are they large comparative to or compared to prior days, uh, weeks, whatever it may be? Use a comparison and say, hey, we've done 100 ticks in the first hour. Normally we do 50. This looks like a good trend day. Now, obviously, the later you leave it, the, the kind of less likely or more less juice you're going to get from the, tr from the trade. So you want to kind of add these up and make your decision as early as possible. Like anything in trading, guys, you, the earlier you get on it, the less information you've got that it's gonna be valid, but of course, the more meat on the bone you're gonna get from 
the deal. Okay, so number four we've got is the price action of what I mean by that. So I've kind of covered that really. I mean, you know, where are we relative to the overnight range? What's the price action? I guess I didn't recover that. What's the price action in the opening range? So have we kind of exploded off and, and held near highs? Have we been whip soaring round? It's been whip soaring round back and forth for the first 30 minutes. Chance of being a trend day are less than if it's kind of exploded in the first 15, pulled back a bit, stalled, hold, held near highs for another five, 10 minutes, then put another leg in and had that kind of price action. If we see almost a mini trend in the first 15, 30, yeah, 60 if you really want to be cautious. In the first 15, 30 though, you've seen almost a mini trend behavior that if you extended it out over a day, like a trend day, then you can maybe say, you know what? I'm gonna have a little shot at this. I'm gonna have a crack. I'm gonna have a go. I'm gonna take my long here. I might feel like I'm stretching at the higher the 15 minute range, or maybe I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm you know, being a little bit chasing, but not really, because if your range is only kind of 60 ticks, and you've potentially got the end of a trend day and you're going long, you might say, okay, well, I will use a 60 tick stop or whatever it may be, 60 pips. However, we could be into a 300, 400 point move in the day and then the second leg off, often you get a follow through for a trend day overnight and a little gap up in the morning if it's a real monster. So the risk reward is pretty decent for it, even though sometimes it feels like it's gone quite far, especially if you're a day trader kind of really zooming in on your three minute or five minute, whatever it may be. Uh, so just some clues as to whether it's going to be a trend day. And the general rule is if you think it's going to be a trend day for whatever reason, whether you use this, whether you use other things, the idea is, as I said before, you take your trade and you leave it. You don't get involved with it. You might get a spike uh, kind of in towards midday and it retraces, but a true one will retrace a little bit and then it will drive to highs. You know, generally speaking, don't try and be clever with it. If you think you've got on the end of it, and, you, and you've got this kind of, you've got this kind of bad habit of, of meddling with things, just stick your stop in and go away and come back at the end of the day and see, sometimes you might be pleasantly surprised. If you find yourself suddenly up 350 points, 350 pips on a day, you'd be very, very pleased with that. Whereas my guess is many of us, especially for day trading, will see it up kind of 100, 150, retracing over the midday chop and kind of settling down, drifting down, and you'll end up banking that because that's the kind of thing day traders want to do. They want to kind of take the profits and you'll say to yourself, well, I'll get on the end of a, of a big move later in the day. But you've got a chance of messing that up. You've got a chance of all sorts of things that's not happening. So you know, do that. Maybe you kind of look at it during the day and ratchet up a trading stop if you want to do that, you know, halfway of the move. Give it a little bit of room because often, you know, trend days are going to drive. They're going to rotate back quite a little bit of a way. And then you get that afternoon breakout that really motors right into the close. That's the classic one. And of course, if you can get on the end of that, it's a great trade and it really gives you a boost to your account. All right, guys, clue to spotting a trend day. Thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. Subscribe if you haven't yet already for more videos from me and others on this channel. Take care, good trading, keep the risk managed, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.